recording. Hi, I'm Captain <laughs> Matt Ketchum from Pecan Gold Oysters. Oh, start over. Gold colored. I gotta start that over. <laughs> You're gonna edit all this, right? Hi, I'm Captain Matt Ketchum, owner of Pecan Gold Oysters. This is my beautiful girlfriend, Kelsey. And today we're gonna make for you our soon to be famous Pecan Gold Oyster Stuffing. Okay, now keep going. Well, we made it the other day for Friendsgiving at First and South, and everybody was raving and told us we had to release the recipe. Usually we keep those things secret, but today we're going to share it with you. Okay. I feel better if you stopped it and then started it. At least I'm not. Alright. What's a pecan gold oyster? Well, Kelsey, <laughs> we grow our pecan golds on the south end of Great Peconic Bay. We're on a shallow water bank. And the rough weather in the fall and winter gives the oysters a beautiful shape. Coming soon, shucked oysters. Pints, what? quarts, whatever. We're starting to mess around with some recipes. Who knows, one day it might even be a cookbook. Okay, we'll see how this first recipe goes. We'll see how this one goes. Okay. We'll get started. So this is the Peconic Gold Oyster Stuffing. So to start, um, gotta make your cornbread. You could so, make any kind. Uh, three cups for this recipe, Yeah, right? three cups three crumbled cups. cornbread for this recipe. Right. So now we move on to the rest of the ingredients. And the main ingredient is... Pecan gold oysters. Pecan gold oysters! Surprise, surprise. Alright, so for this recipe we're using around two dozen oysters. Usually I slurp a couple down. I think I've been using 22 oysters for this recipe. Um, so a little under a pint of oysters. You want to save the liqueur. As usual, you go right into the hinge there, pop it up, stay along the top, because it's nice when the oysters are intact um, when you eat this recipe. It's nice to have a, a nice whole oyster. Of course, they shrivel up a little bit when you cook them, but you want to go like that. Make sure you get any little bits of shell out. Put it right into a strainer, put a little hole underneath it. Cornbread, oysters, together. Together. Our oyster meats there. There we are. Take your fresh made cornbread and you're just gonna coarsely crumble it. Just crumble it all up. And you're just gonna mix it, toss it with the oysters so that it can sits, has a nice time to absorb. And Matt, what are you doing? I'm gonna save the liqueur. I'm gonna pour it into here. Should be about three quarters of a cup for 22 oysters, so we're gonna just measure that out, pour it slowly, you might wanna leave a little bit of that grit in the bowl. We're gonna put this aside, let this sit for a little while, while we make the rest of the recipe. So for the sauce, we have um, four slices of bacon that Matt has nicely chopped into quarter inch pieces. We have around three medium shallots, Thinly sliced. This is very important. You want to make sure it's thinly sliced. Right down. Same thing with the celery. Couple pieces. You could leave the leaves and all that in there. Yeah. Just two stalks of celery. And then we have our fresh herbs. A few tablespoons of parsley. And thyme. I didn't do the thyme yet. We have our ingredients ready. We also have some butter because butter is the best. Six tablespoons of butter. And then we're going to reserve two tablespoons um, for the end. So. Um, we have everything ready and let's get cooking. Time to start cooking. It's time to start cooking. All right. We're going to start with our bacon. Get the pan like medium, medium high heat. Cook that a little bit. Get it to uh, be, you know, cooked a little bit brown. The bacon is kind of brown, right? Some pieces are brown. starting to brown a little bit, so we're going to Transfer those to a paper towel with a slotted spoon. We're gonna drain this grease, but I'm gonna leave a little bit in the pan because who doesn't love a little bacon grease? And we're gonna return it to the heat. But yep. Before I put it back on the heat, we're gonna add six tablespoons of stick butter. A little bit of butter on there. I don't want the butter to burn, so try to get it to just melt. Woo. Look out! Might have to lift it off the heat a little bit. You don't want it to burn. You want want the 
foam to subside, the butter get a little bit brown, and then it's time to add your other stuff. Our puppy's knocking. Wrangle the oyster pup. You must, he is. You must smell the oysters. Come on. He smells it. There he is. There he is. The one and only. Wrangle himself. Sit. The shouts. All right, we're going to have the shouts. Okay, Wrangle, you can have that little treat. treat. Mr. Wrangle. So we add the Thinly shallots. sliced shallots. They're going to almost uh, dissipate as we cook them. It's beautiful. All right. We're also going to add the celery. Celery, thinly sliced. Same thing. All right. Now Matt's going to season this with salt and pepper. As a much salt, as a little salt, pepper. I don't go too crazy, I always could do a little more later. And we're going to add the bacon back in now. Now that's draining down on its nice paper towel. A beautiful bacon, perfectly cooked. It's going back in. All right, and we're going to keep this down for about seven or eight minutes uh, until everything's soft. So, let's take a look at that nice. All right, so everything's uh, starting to soften up a little bit. It's been about five, six minutes. You really can tell with the, the bigger pieces of celery starting to soften up. It smells delicious. I mean, it's really nice. Shallots are almost starting to disappear a little bit. We're going to add our herbs. Oyster liqueur. Give that a quick stir. And uh, I always love cooking with wine. Today we got a little Bridge Lane Sauvignon Blanc. It's a drier, drier white wine from the North Fork of Long Island. It's great, and sometimes I even like to add a little wine to the food. A couple tablespoons. We'll stir this in and get it to simmer for a little bit. Cook off that alcohol just a little bit. Really adds a nice, nice flavor, that dry white wine from right around the block here. Right around the block from the farm stand. We're going to bring that over, that mixture over, and we're going to add it back into our cornbread oyster mixture that we made right at the beginning. So we're going to put that in. Yeah, it looks really good and smells really good. It smells delicious. We're going to stir this to combine. We're going to make sure everything's nice and incorporated. Get all those juices, all that bacon, in with the oysters and the cornbread. And after we combine all this, we're going to let this sit for 10 minutes to really make sure that cornbread kind of gets saturated with all these flavors. Just so we're just going to butter, butter this. That. Butter all the sides, the bottom, and you're going to preheat your oven to 400 degrees. So this puppy can go on in and reserve two tablespoons of it. I like to cut it into tiny pieces, those two tablespoons, because we're going to dot the surface of the stuffing once we add it back in. I thought that part was a secret. It's a secret. Just like pecan and gold oysters are the best kept secret of the North Fork. It's true. Who oh, knew? No. So far. So far, but you can get them right on the North Road. I'm going to kind of smooth it on out. Look at those beautiful, whole, intact oysters. I mean, texture yeah, is really important. Big bellies. Like They're looking really good. So here we go. Try not to press it down too much, but it looks good. It out. Now I took that two tablespoons of butter, cut them into teeny little, like, half inch pieces and we're just going to dot them around different parts. I like to be a little more precise. <laughs> I'm a little more random. Uh, we all knew that, right? Yeah, we all knew that. <laughs> you know, we're going to bake it for I think about 15, 50 minutes or until golden brown, but this is the perfect dish. You can sort of do all this at home and then bring it somewhere, pop it in the oven. And everybody's going to love you. All so right. we're going to put this in the oven Pop for it in. 50 minutes and we'll see you when you're golden brown. All right. All right, grab a couple oven mitts, mix and match them, whatever you got to <laughs> do. Woo, look at that. 
Wow. Perfectly cooked. You see a couple oysters on this. I mean, it's a beautiful dish. Great for Thanksgiving, Christmas. It's all ready. Cooling down. Oh, I like to garnish with a little bit of parsley. You see that one oyster on top there. Big it's firm, down. it's cooked, you know. Mm. It's awesome. It's salty. I think Thank the you. secret is you have to use pecan golds. Mm-hmm. Definitely. I can't describe it. It's speechless. <laughs> That's good. Good. It's good. I mean, a few words. It's good. From all of us here at Pecan and Golds, <laughs> we say thank you <laughs> for coming and thank you for watching our video. Thanks for cooking with Pecan and Golds. Enjoy. We'll have this recipe up on our blog with all of the ingredients and all of the measurements and everything that you need. So please check it out and please make it and give us a call when you need your shark oysters or your oysters on the half shell this holiday season. Picada Golds is ready to provide. We're ready. Give us a call. Bye. Bye.